Hello, everybody. My name is Willem. As Dean read me, I'm an engineering lead here at Tecton. I'm mostly focused on Feast and the open source project of, um, of Feast. Um, and today I'll be talking a bit about using Feast on AWS. So just a quick summary of what Feast is for those of you who don't know. Feast is an open source feature store for machine learning. Basically, we're trying to solve some of the key operational challenges with productionizing data for ML, things like tracking and managing features and defining them um, as they're used for models in production. You know, how do you deploy, manage um, uh, infrastructure for serving features at scale, whether it's for training um, models or for, for low latency predictions? How do you avoid pitfalls like uh, it for in, in data for ML, like label leakage or ensuring point in time correctness um, and then ultimately ensuring that models see a consistent view of data, whether training and serving, and in order to avoid things like uh, training serving skew. So those are some of the areas that we've been focusing on with Feast. The whole space of operational data for ML is massive and a lot of problems to be solved, but that are some of the things that we've been working on um, in the last couple of months. So I'm super excited to announce today that Feast 0.12 is out. Um, we, we've added two new capabilities to Feast, 0, uh, to Feast in 0 0.12. Um, the first one is AWS support. So we've got support for Redshift as the offline store, and we've got support for DynamoDB as the online store. And on the right there, I've got a little code snippet. It's a feature store YAML. Essentially, this is how you configure Feast. And all you need to do to make use of this new functionality is you know, set your online store to DynamoDB, set your offline store to Redshift, you know, add some config fields, but basically that's it and you can start using um, you know, Feast on AWS. Another thing we added is, uh, our, is a new concept called feature services. And this is an important um, functionality that basically it's a grouping of features that you know, exist within your feature registry already, feature views, as they're used by models uh, for consumption purposes. And this builds a relationship between the features in the feature store and models in production. And it is a convenient abstraction for querying features um, from you know from the consumption side, where you don't have to provide the whole list of features to query, you can just provide the feature service name, and so that abstraction really helps from the consumption side as well. So what I'm going to be demoing today is Feast on AWS, and one of the things we've heard a lot from teams is you now I've got you know, all these ETL pipelines and Spark and Airflow, and I'm producing all this feature data, and I'm, I'm sitting in with it on Parquet on S3. Um, how can I use that with Feast? So one of the ways you can do that is now that we have support for Redshift is you can add those data sources on S3 as tables in Redshift using Redshift Spectrum, and you can use Feast as the query layer in order to access that data. So what I'm gonna show you today is how you can deploy a feature repository that maps those data sources, those features that you're creating from your ETL pipelines um, into the feature store and configure your feature store. And then we're going to train a, a model um, and Feast is going to handle all of the training data set creation. And then finally, we're going to ship that model into quote unquote prod um, and then use DynamoDB as the online feature store to you know, read feature values, low latency and make a prediction in order to drank, uh, rank some drivers. So those are the three steps that we're going to be doing today in this mini demo. So let me quickly just show you what the data looks like. I hope you can still see my screen. Um, so basically, this is just an S3 interface Parquet files in S3. This is typically what a team would have, like just some you know, data being produced from ETL pipelines as like Parquet partition files. Um, there's nothing special here, very vanilla. Um, so what I've done here is I've created a, a table um, in Spectrum that maps the S3 data you know, into Redshift. So Redshift has an awareness of the data in S3. So S3 is the source of truth, but Redshift is gonna be our query engine to access this data. And if you look at the columns in, these, in this table, it, it's time series data, it's keyed on a driver, and there are various feature columns like conversion rate, acceptance rate, and average daily trips. And you know, these features are what you want to use to train your model and, and make your predictions. Um, and so you know, this is already set up, it's outside of Feast, but we need to give Feast an awareness of this data in order to you know, use it for operationalizing um, your existing feature data. So how do we do that? Well, step one is we want to set up our feature repository and we want to deploy our feature store. So the first thing we do is we go to the feature store YAML file over here, uh, which we've created, and we've set it up already. It's got a provider as AWS. It's got the online store as DynamoDB. And then we set the offline store to Redshift. And you know, I've configured this ready to point to this cluster that we have. 
um, that's ac and that can access those S3 files. Um, so now Feast has an awareness of the infrastructure, but how, what about the business logic? So in order to define uh, or tell Feast where your data lives and the properties of your data, you create a driver repo. And this driver repo you know, has a few objects within it. It's all Python based. But the first thing is you define an entity, which you know, is just a reusable, you know, essentially a key and for this driver that's used during the join process when you have multiple sources of data. But in, the, you know, in this case, we only have that one table, that parquet file, that driver statistics, and it's in, spec, uh, it's in Redshift. And you know, I've just created this Redshift data source and I'm selecting that data and I'm telling Feast, you know, this is where you can find the data, you can just query this table. And, but how you tell Feast exactly how this data is structured is using a feature view. And that's ultimately how you bring all these things together. Um, you know, the feature view is the, the ultimate grouping of the data and it defines the properties and tells Feast how it can treat this data in order to do its point in time joins. Um, but that's a cataloging uh, concept. What we're actually going to be using for retrieval is a feature service. Now, this feature service is going to be a mapping of um, our model to the features it needs. In this case, we only have one feature view, this driver statistics feature view, but you could have many feature views here that you're querying for this specific model. Um, and Feast will intelligently join those together and, and ensure that your model sees the right data. So now that our driver repo is set up and we've got our feature store YAML, all we need to do is go over into this folder and run feast apply. And hopefully this works. Right, and so what, what just happened? Right, if you look at this repository, a little registry DB has been created. What this is doing is just creating a snapshot of the data in the registry and registering like these objects, these ent entity, the feature view, the feature service. In a production setup, this would be centralized and many teams would share this registry. For this demo, I'm just using a local registry so that you can just see it and it's more responsive. Um, well, another thing that Feast Apply did is it actually set up our infrastructure like DynamoDB and Richard in such a way that, and it validated the infrastructure that we could actually use it as our feature store. But so the steps has succeeded. Now, the next step is we wanna train a model. So how do we do that? Now that we have our feature store set up, that was step one, now we're moving to step two. We go to this train uh, script and in this little script, we just want to export data from the feature store in order to train a model and then use a little linear regression scikit-learn model to train and export a model. And so how we do this is we use, the, if you look at uh, over here, this driver model feature uh, service as the query. And this query is being fed into uh, a feature store object and we use the get historical features method on the feature store object in order to query data. And so how this will work is, um, you know, the, the feature store uh, object, which was, sorry, I skipped this a bit, a bit uh, defined using this feature store constructor. Um, it knows based on your feature repository where your infrastructure is. It knows which feature views exist, uh, where Redshift is defined, and where, where um, you know, all, all the components live. And so when we run get historical features, Feast will generate a large query, send that to Redshift, and it'll query the S3 objects and join them intelligently in a point in time correct way. And it knows which features you want for your model because you've defined this feature service already. Um, so let me just quickly run that. Willem, while you're running that, can you also make the font bigger for us? Uh, I think that would be a little bit tricky to do. Uh, oh. I can try and go into presentation mode, but I would not be able to navigate, unfortunately. Okay, no worries. Okay, so maybe you can just try and go with my verbal explanation. <laughs> so basically, you know, you can just create a feature store object, you know, get your historical features, Feast will deal with all the joins, it'll query your, your backend, your offline store, build the training data set and train your model. And you can see on the left here, we've, we've created this model. Final step. Now we want to materialize data into the online store and use that for prediction. So we just go over to the driver ranking, our feature repo, run materialize. And now what we're doing is querying Redshift for the latest feature values, loading that into our online store. And how do we make a prediction? Well, it's pretty simple. We just, we have a little prediction script here. Um, what we're going to be receiving is a list of IDs and we want to you know, enrich those IDs with features predict you know, which driver is the best driver and return the, the best driver. So what we do in production is we'd load the model um, you know, using the, whatever you, tools you already use. But then instead of just querying the online store directly, we'd uh, 
instead of like writing scripts like SQL queries in as part of our um, you know online stack, we'd use Feast as the interface. So you create a feature store object again, just like in the offline case, and then your predict method you'd use the get online features method instead of get historical features. And this in this case, we're querying DynamoDB and we are sending a list of driver IDs and we're using the feature service that we've previously defined and we're getting the latest feature values. And then we're using that to make a prediction and then return the best driver. And so if we run Python predict, you should see a driver ID come back. Yep, we've got the driver ID back. And so that's pretty much it. I'll share this code with everybody after this talk, and you know you can see exactly what I meant if the font was a little bit too small for you to see right now. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to demo. And um, you know what we did is we deployed a feature store with our feature re repo that we defined. We built this training data set, trained a model. We used that model then to you know, make a prediction using DynamoDB's related to the feature values that we floated into DynamoDB. So pretty simple stuff. Um, that's all I wanted to demo. You know, Feast 0.12 is out. You can install it with pip install feast. Um, you know, our announcement blog post is up in the URL that's on screen. And finally, um, check out our docs um, if you want to see more information about 0.12 and come and say hello in Slack, you know, join the community.